I'm Louisa Barton with the Horse Talk Show here at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital in Ocala, Florida. And I have Dr. Kayot with me here. And we're actually going to talk about bad habits in horses um, and things that you can do maybe to help alleviate some of that. The big one, of course, that everybody can't stand is cribbing. It's one of the first questions people ask if you have a horse for sale. Is it a cribber? Uh, nobody wants a cribber in the barn and nobody wants a cribber in the pasture. Do you come across quite a lot of cribbers, Dr. Kale? <laughs> well, I work in the horse industry, so yeah, there's there's a few out there. Um, yeah, so that's just like the bane of the horse owner, right? And and um, you, it's so destructive, it's expensive because they tear apart stalls, they tear apart fences. They can uh, get to the point where, where they... Um, actually are a detriment to themselves because they sit there and they crib instead of eat which is what they need to do you know to, to maintain that thousand pound body mass you takes a lot of calories to maintain that uh, physique so if they're sitting there cribbing on the fence post or um you know uh cribbing on the stall wall or whatever then that that is a big problem and it, it could be an expensive problem and one that that uh, nobody wants so you probably obviously see the cribbers tend to have less weight on them maybe than the non-cribbers but what actually starts a horse cribbing do we know i don't think we really know that question you know that they that says that um uh, you know, if you get a cribber in the barn, then it will cause the other horses to crib. I don't know if that's the case, you know. I mean, there's some horses that may pick it up, some that don't. I think I think it gets picked up mainly out of boredom or out of, you know, um, just... I don't maybe a, a, a horse that is over anxious or, or tends to be a little higher strung horse, but it happens in all breeds, all sizes, all all types of horses that that will crib. I don't think we really know why they do it. If we kind of knew why, we might be able to focus on preventing it better or, or, or causing it to not to happen but if it was a person we'd probably send them to the therapist right yeah probably <laughs> that's right so maybe you know you need to get the a horse whisperer out or the horse psychic and they can talk about their problems or their feelings and um, you know maybe get get some of that out so they're not chewing on the wood but uh, um, yeah it's 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 difficult I, I think I think a lot of it does stem from horses that are that are bored and once they get that habit old habits are hard to break so um you don't typically see it in horses that are turned out most of the time they it does typically happen in horses that are stalled the majority of, of their of their day um but you know uh it, it's it can be a real bear you know i mean there's there's n there's no real medical fix for it you know obviously everybody knows about cribbing collars and and those sorts of things and you know i've seen some extreme you know the 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 little the clips that they put between their front teeth i'm not a big fan of that that doesn't seem very humane to me but um i have seen that i wouldn't recommend that but um it's a very frustrating thing and people will go to great lengths to try to prevent their horse from chewing down the barn or chewing down their fencing and that sort of thing. Now, now is it true that a horse actually gets addicted to doing it? I mean, I know that's probably a hard question to answer because you can't ask the horse, right. but people have said it's almost like um, when they suck in and the air is almost like a kind of a high for them. Is well, that right? Well, I, I, the way I understand it is they do get some endorphin release from it, right? Um just kind of like even when you put a twitch on there's endorphin release which is kind of bizarre but uh but yeah they can get a you know a euphoric kind of feeling just a uh, uh from the endorphin release that that can happen i mean the other thing you talk about the air that they suck in well that air has to go somewhere and those horses tend to be more likely to colic because they have excess gas in their, you know, in their digestive tract because they're sitting there sucking it in. So that can happen. You know, you just saying that made me think of that. So cribbing is a problem. That's why 
people like you said when they're wanting to buy <laughs> does the horse crib you know and and you know certainly the sales pavilions and that sort of thing generally have um provisions in that if this horse is a is a cribber or you get it home and ends up being a cribber and wasn't announced and that sort of thing then you're not liable to have keep the horse so it is a it's a big deal it affects industry it's a very costly one i mean if you have a nice horse that cribs People don't want it. Doesn't matter because in the long run, it's going to be, um, you know, that that stigma that they'll get the other horses to start cribbing is alive. It is whether that's the truth or not. I'm not sure, but it is alive. So nobody wants, you know, it's kind of like the scarlet letter, you know, in the horse world. You don't want that horse in your in your in your barn, you know. So. And and I've not actually seen that in the horses that I've seen as cribbers with other horses. But I haven't been around that with younger horses, and I would imagine the risk of copycat behavior is probably more likely in a younger horse, like a foal or a yearling, that might be sort of learning to find its way around, and that's its example. And that certainly, I think, could be probably more alarming than an older horse that's been around for a long time, like mine, are unlikely to begin a new habit at later in life. So I would think that if you have a barn of young horses, you'd be very concerned if you had one in there that was a cribber. Yeah, I think I think I think that's true. I think you know, and and typically you'll see if the mare's a cribber, oh, the baby ends up being a cribber. You know, yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. The, that's not untypical. For, you know, that's not that's not another copycat. yeah another copycat thing. I, I I see that you know frequently. Um, so you saying the younger horse doing that um, does make sense. You know. Now, um, do veterinarians ever recommend any medications to calm horses if they are an anxious horse and it tends to be associated with anxiety? Because it seems to me if it was a person, it would be certainly would be an anxious, thinner person and more nervous person is kind of what you see when you think of a horse as a cribber as a person. That would kind of be, do you ever recommend anything to calm a horse down like that? Well, any, any of your... Um things that may work, you know, um, anti-ulcer drugs to calm horses down, um, uh, uh, long acting, uh, tranquilizers, you know, that sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of, uh, feed through additives that can lower horses stress that are out there on the market. And of course, you know, you brought this up before the segment, but you know, I, I don't have any, you know, personal experience with this, but the CBD stuff, I, I, I know people are, um, you know, that's kind of a hot thing right now. Um, and and I think that people have seen some benefit, you know, from that, and 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 um, so we'll see, you know, we'll see how that progresses in the future. But anything to lower the horse's um, anxiety, or just just try to know your horse. Maybe your horse needs to be turned outside a little bit more. You know, um, maybe he doesn't like this buddy that he's stalled next to whatever you know i mean just just kind of yeah just try different things and, and and see see what works but um certainly it can be a uh, frustrating habit indeed nobody seems to want a cribber i always feel terrible for the cribbers because sometimes they're very sweet horses and and they don't really find a home so easily it's a shame they just can't. I'm Louisa Varton for the Horse Talk Show here at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital with Dr. Adam Kayot.